Hi, I'm Alan Gass, Space Sales Engineer with West, here to talk to you about automatic phone tracking and how to identify where 911 calls are coming from. So essentially, the phone number of the device no longer corresponds with its physical location. So in the old days, you'd have a phone number tied with a piece of copper into the phone, and if that moved, you'd have to update that record. So essentially today, we can have the same phone number on multiple devices, devices that are moving around. It really kind of doesn't make sense to look at the phone number of where to identify where they're located. So essentially, you need to start taking a look at where the devices are connecting to the network to automatically discover where they are. So essentially, instead of tracking the phones by the phone number, you identify your, your static endpoints of uh, your network elements, so your wireless access points, your Ethernet switches, and your IP subnets to be able to identify where they are. So essentially, you would basically tie a, a location to an IP subnet to say 192.168.00, for example, lives on the first floor of this building. So you can assign this to the different voice VLANs, data VLANs, depending on, on, your, uh, on your topology. The, then you can also uh, take a look at the, uh, the Ethernet switch that the device is connecting to. So you can say, this switch lives in this IDF closet on the third floor of this building, and all the devices that are connecting into it is, is that's where they're, they're physically located. Using that method, you can also break it down to in, into individual interfaces to say port 16 on this switch terminates to conference room C, uh, port 17 goes to conference room B. You can actually identify down to the desk or cube level based off of the port or a range of ports that the users are connected to. And then moving into wireless, uh, uh, wireless tracking, you can actually identify and map out the locations of your access points and where they're physically located. So access point number 23 with its associated basic service set identifier is on the conference room or where it's on the third floor or wherever it is. And then essentially as the 911 call is placed, the call hits the emergency gateway appliance and it has a mapping of th these, uh, these network elements in its uh, location information service database or list. And it's gonna identify that the guy's connecting from either this IP subnet or this switch or this access point identify the location data, and then route the call to the ERS to get out to the answering point. So in that case, your devices can be moving around, and you don't have to manage their phone number. You basically say, these are the static locations of my subnets, my switches, and access points, and as devices are moving around, the emergency gateway will automatically track them and then deliver the location data and the call to the emergency routing service and out to the PSAP. So the next piece of it is to identify if your IP subnets or switches or access points uh, are, are kind of laid out differently, say you have an IP subnet that spans multiple floors or multiple zones, or you have a switch that's spanning multiple buildings or multiple floors, or however your network is set up, the emergency gateway does have a uh, hierarchy that it can use to identify the location. So for example, uh, 192.168.00 can be set up as a slash 16 network and have a slash 24 for every, uh, every floor or closet or however how that's, uh, that's broken up. You can also still use the, uh, the Ethernet switches and ports and port ranges to say these ports are in this location. And the emergency gateway has a, has a hierarchy that it will apply. It'll say, I'm going to find the MAC address of the device based off of the port it's on, which is very, very granular. If it doesn't find that, it'll fall back to the switch it's on. If it doesn't find that, then it'll fall back to the IP subnet or a supernet. It always uses a, a configurable method of saying, I'm going to look at the, either this, the IP subnet, the Ethernet switch, or the wireless access point. So you don't have to assign every single switch into your environment so, or every single access point in the environment. If you have an IP subnet that will provide the same level of, uh, of, of, of uh, granularity for, say, a branch office where everything, depending, doesn't matter which access point or switch they're on, they're all within one subnet. It's a small location. You can just add in the subnet and be done with it. So you don't actually have to add every single device into the environment, but it's very, very flexible to be able to adapt to the different things that you might encounter in your environment. So you might have a, a, a campus that has, you know, everything's been nicely refreshed and you might have an older building that has a whole bunch of crazy stuff in it. You can use that overlay discovery method to either use supernets or switches or ports or access points in any different level. So you can encounter and adapt to any kind of uh, crazy situation you might find in your environment as you're going through.